welcome to another video. Today I'm doing something that I haven't done in a while and that's a book review. Why have I not done more book reviews? I don't know, I guess I kept seeing people say that like book reviews don't do so well on YouTube, but I don't fucking care. I want to talk about this book and the book is December Park by Ronald Malfi. I discovered this book thanks to Violet Prynne on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below. She's absolutely awesome when it comes to anything horror, thriller. It's great. She does a lot of book reviews and this was, I think it was one of her favorite books from last year. So I just automatically added it to my TBR and I finally got around to it and holy fucking shit, this book was amazing. It moves pretty slowly, but the book is about uh, these kids who live in a town, uh, Harding Falls, I think. Yeah, Harding Falls. In that town, some kids have been abducted and they haven't been finding the bodies. So they're like, well, there's a killer on the loose. There's a serial killer. And they nicknamed him the Piper. Now the book starts with these four friends who they're kind of like, honestly, I related so much to these boys. They are like those delinquent kind of no good kids, but at the same time, you know, they still go to class, they do their homework, they do what they're supposed to, they listen to their parents, they come back when it's time for curfew, blah, blah, blah. So like they smoke cigarettes and they're all cool and stuff and they ride their bikes around, but they also like, they're still good kids. And I, I personally like that. So they are teenagers, they're in high school, I think they're 15, 16. And the book starts off with them uh, leaving class early, kind of skipping out a little early, and they see a bunch of cop cars that have found a body. And it's like the third disappeared kid, but the first body that they found. And yeah, it's kind of just the beginning of this rising terror that's happening in this town where people are like, well, our kids are disappearing and the cops aren't finding any leads. Now these kids begin to get interested in the investigation. Particularly, they start um, getting more involved in investigating the Piper and the disappearing kids on their own when they meet a new kid in town called Adrian. So our main character is Angelo <clears throat> or Angie and he is the son of a cop and his friends Michael and Scott and Peter, they kind of incorporate Adrian into their group. Adrian's kind of, you know, he's a quiet little oddball and he found, or, oh, I shouldn't say that, that's a spoiler. What I really loved about this book is the writing. Every word, every sentence kept me interested. And how would I say this? It, a lot of what happens in the book is just, it's just kids hanging out, living in their town, um, doing random things that are unrelated to trying to find a killer. And then occasionally you get these little pieces of, oh, they have a lead on something, so they're gonna go, you know, try to find the Piper. And then, oh, no, now he's just talking about how he had this game going on with a girl for a few years, and he likes to write, and she likes poetry, and just... It, I don't know. I think it was just really well written where every time I was like, this is just the life of kids in the middle of a shitstorm and horrendous things are happening around them and their lives are hard too. Like this kid, Adrian, rough past, man, rough past. So the writing was probably the main part, but I loved so many. I love the characters. I think every single character in this book really felt like an individual character and I can remember all of them. Did you notice that I remembered all their names? I think that maybe that's why I don't remember names very well is because I can't really tell different characters from each other, but this in this book I really could. Like um, Angelo, he's a sweet boy and he has such a creative imagination and he's he's been through a lot, you know? He lost his brother and his dad is a cop and he's barely around and they're just, they're having a rough time, but he's also a good son. Like he, he tries to follow his dad's rules, but occasionally tries to push back. His dad also felt like a, a real person there too, just trying to be a dad and also trying to have his job. His grandparents, his grandma and his grandma, his grandpa was fucking hilarious. And then his friends, Michael. Michael is the fucking oddball who does the stupid shit that you're just like, oh my God, he might get us killed but he's also such a good friend. Scott is the smart ass who knows everything and it's frustrating. And Peter is the loyal friend who's just always there for you. And he's like that quiet one who you can always rely on. And Adrian is 
the one that you just kind of want to protect because you're like, oh my god, you're so fragile. <laughs> there were so many characters and I love them all. I think that that was a very strong point in this. The intrigue, the way it was built, built up, because it's slow. Again, it is very slow. And there are moments, I can understand why some people would not like this book. I personally loved it because probably one of my favorite, I don't even know how to explain it, my favorite tropes. Yeah. One of my favorite tropes is friend groups, particularly guy friend groups, because there is such a dynamic in a group of male friends. They will pick on each other, they will dare each other to do stupid shit, they'll hurt each other, but they have such a strong bond and I loved that. So the, the way that the story was built around their friendship and also the investigation just really kept me constantly interested. I was interested to see their interactions and what they discovered and how they approached the problems. Also, they're teenagers. They make stupid decisions. So there were times when I was yelling at the book, I was like, oh my God, just tell the cops. Stop trying to investigate this on your own. Tell the fucking cops because it's not your fucking job. Your job is to go to school. Anyways, so that was also something that I think was really well built. The intrigue, the, the way that it kept you invested in the story, in the character story, and in trying to find this Piper. And then the very ending, I definitely did not see it coming. I suspected so many different people that I can't believe I glossed over the one suspect that was probably the most obvious. But, you know, that's just me. I don't really read a lot of these. Um, and I'll say that, like, the, the horror in this, it wasn't as heavy. I I guess when I when I hear horror, I don't read enough horror and I want to because I clearly like it very much, but I don't read enough to really quite understand what that means. And I think that um for this one, the horror was probably more on the side of past trauma and difficult family situations and well there was there was definitely body horror as well but that came in a lot later and then there was some like just unsettling horror sometimes like the the Angelo ends up having these dreams sometimes that were just it was creepy like there were just times I was like mm, no let's Let's not, let's step away. Or like the kids would go into places, like they went into a tunnel that I was like, why are you in there? Please get out. <laughs> and I guess maybe that's more horror thriller, maybe? I don't really know how to classify it, but yeah, I there were times when I was like yelling at this book like I was actually yelling at the children. I was like, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Or at one point, there's like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm talking so much, I can't keep track of everything I'm thinking and that I want to say about how much I enjoyed this book. Ultimately, I really love this book, and now Ronald Malfi is on my list of authors to buy immediately. And I know he has one other book. I think he has one other book, or there's another book coming out soon. But I'm definitely going to buy it and read it as well, because it was just so well written. I felt like I was hanging off of every word. Oh, here. Oh, he's got a lot of books. What? Oh, man. Oh, he has one called The Ascent. That one's a climbing one. Those ones are always terrifying. Cradle Lake, Floating Staircase. That's creepy. And Snow. Well, there are a few books that I need to add on to my TBR. <laughs> so yes, um, I absolutely love this book. If you are interested in reading a very slow building horror that has an ending that you will not expect. And man, there were so many times reading this book that I, I felt nostalgia. I felt incredible nostalgia because nonetheless, like these kids are teenagers in 1994 or something or 1995. I was born in 1996. But still, there were things that they did that, like, I did as well when I was a teen because, like, the biking around to go find your friends. I did that. And the the little, the small worries that teenagers have, it was just so well portrayed. This was... Oh, I've seen people talk about this as a coming-of-age story, and honestly, I don't really know how to define those, but I guess, yeah, the, this is coming-of-age. This is what it is. Is The thing, I think I don't understand why we call it coming-of-age, because it's not like they're growing up in the book. They stay the age that they are, but they experience things that mold who 
who they are and kind of shows more of their personality. I guess uh, maybe I really like that um, trope. Is that a trope? Coming of age? I don't know how to explain this. Anyways, I really love this book and I hope that if my review has motivated you to read it that you will also love it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've read this book before or if you intend to read it now that I have ranted profusely about it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Love you. See you next time.